the goodness is in you. Believe in the Lord. God has given you a unique fruit. Nobody can copy you. You are never going to lose your salvation. Ever. He is faithful to answer every prayer. It's nice to be back after a long time to present the word. Uh, I prepared... Uh, Actually, I wanted to speak something else and uh, I was prepared for something else. But um, when I got saved in my 20s, I got saved in this church and when I got saved, uh, we were not in uh, this kind of setting. We were in a thatch roof and, uh, and it was very small. I mean, pastor used to tell those who are tall, please don't lift your hands, the fan might hit your hand. I mean, it was so low and... Uh, uh, amazingly, the love of God was the same from that day till today. He never changes. And uh, from that day, uh, we formed a group, uh, a similar faith and similar liking towards God and Word and all that. And we watched a lot of videos. And uh, we discussed a lot of things about what happened in the early church and how it can manifest now, why it's not working. And we used to go to the riverbed there and uh, cry out before God. We want the fullness to manifest. And uh, really it did happen and during that time. This church is an outcome of few of us and a pastor and we stood with him and uh, we, just, we just said, God... Do it. We are ready. We are just available. Do it. You know what? Mass, mass conversion of youth, which is very impossible in Velour at that time. I got saved. That was a miracle. My, you, must, you, must, you must talk to my mom. I mean, they all gave up hope. This guy is lost. I was steeping into the world and uh, through music, I was just getting very evil and uh, getting into very bad friendships. And uh, I thought... I. Even I thought I, wa I, I wanted to be good, but somehow I didn't have any strength in me to be good. It, I just totally lost. So during that time, uh, this power of God, this power of God hit me and hit, it hit several young, young youth who, who, who are just hopeless in the family. Like they gave up and they don't know what to do. God touched. His love is the winner, finally. His love never fails. It wins. Hallelujah. During that time, as we, as we looked into the apostles, we watched movies and on the Acts of the Apostles. We were, I watched Coades. I don't know if you know about Coades. It, it, it is the movie about uh, Nero persecuting the Christians during that time, how he'll throw them into the lions and all of them would be sitting in the galleries and cheering as the lions he, and eats these people and the and the and the saints will sing hallelujah it's it's just i mean it's like i saw it yesterday i mean it's amazing the and then as i as we discussed and as i one thing just stuck with me why is that level of power and influence is not happening today you know after every service and uh, you know, in fellowships that that is gathered in houses, this is this is a normal thing. I don't know you are part of it. I'm sure if you're very serious about God, you're part of it. You will sit down and go through that solical down and sorrow. Lord, why is that level of anointing and uh, breakthrough not happening today? Are you one of it? Are you sitting down and praying and crying out to God, Lord? It should happen. Every time, every time we read about it, we hear about it, the acts of the apostles, we just say, wow, amazing. And we also go, in the, go into our flesh and feel it's impossible. It's amazing, but I don't know whether it can happen now. And we point out to things saying, there is this problem, there is that problem. It was easy that day because they didn't study. All these men were fishermen and they didn't know how, all this theology. So all this theology came in and all these systems came in. So much of education came in. Technology came in. That's why it's just not happening anymore. I also buyed, bought into that lie. But one thing just 
talked to me from that day on i think it was in the year 1998 from that day till today that image has stuck in me and i began to research a lot that is acts 29 acts 29 everybody say acts 29 it's an amazing picture that went into my soul and i started wondering about acts 29 acts 29 what is it what is it what is there in that you know what just like you i turned to the bible and i found that there is no acts 29 i don't know i will tell you where acts 29 is in a while this book of acts ends with 28 and it ends very sadly it ends very sadly if you read the last bit acts 28 27 to 29 for the heart of this people has grown dull and their ears are heavy and hard of hearing and they have shut tight their eyes so that they may not perceive and have knowledge and become acquainted with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their souls and turn that i may heal them so let it be understood by you then that this that this message of salvation of god has been sent to the gentiles and they will listen to it and when he had said these things the jews went away arguing and disputing among themselves very sad ending to a wonderful glorious beginning of the holy spirit a leaf plucked out from the pages from the life of that apostles and thrown to the gentiles and you and i are a blessing seated here today hallelujah acts didn't end turn to the person next to you and say you are acts 29 every day remember that i i just title this way acts 29 mission possible i know you all know about mission impossible i mean these people uh, make us feel that everything is impossible don't even try it and uh, i'm not i'm just challenging you and i and our and our very thinking and our belief to just come out and believe that this acts 29 is me and i'm going to write chapters and chapters through my life hallelujah hallelujah you're getting very serious now is that possible in my research when i say research i didn't go to google google sometimes hangs it doesn't work they, they say shut down for maintenance but the more than all the google the holy spirit is the best search engine you can ask anything and the answer will not be will not only be the answer that you will read the answer will read you that amount of wealth is there in our spirit in our holy spirit so as i begin to search why did that stop why did that stop now this leaf was thrown out to the gentiles the amazing power and the love of god was thrown out into the gentiles it was god saying goodbye jews i have came down in flesh i ministered you you never accepted me you never accepted the gospel you never accepted the messiah as the son of god you never accepted now i'm moving out global i have my chosen ones outside of this circle and he has come out and amazing things happen through the ministry of all the apostles who left jerusalem who left israel and came out and spread the uh, spread the gospel throughout the world and we know one of the disciples thomas came up to chennai visiting india he came up to the south india mostly ministered and we are recipients of today but why did that stop it is not a big issue it is not that they were great people they were all they were all cowards you know that all these disciples you know they were cowards they saw jesus face to face they learnt everything and when the time came of test they all ran away 
when the time the third day came for resurrection nobody came to the tomb they didn't have faith they, they were they all had was fear doubt and all they had was nothing nothing was good in them from the side of heaven to pick them up for this glorious gospel but yet god did it in his mercy so when we read some of these testimonies in the bible or we hear the testimonies we look into our flesh we look into our life and see and see how can i do it and we just uh, close every door and become a very good christian and sit down quietly acts 29 is possible in every one of you seated today it is just a realignment which they did which the church has forgotten to do today a small realignment of how we position our christian life of how we position our our leadership and our and our our sainthood in this world and just allow god to do it did the apostles do those acts or did god do those acts my simple question did apostles do those acts or did god do those acts god we all know these these fishermen all these they were not they were not qualified in any way any way they were not qualified none of the human uh, or hu- or, a, or a man or a priest of that age sadducees pharisees none of them were were eligible it was absolutely the grace power and the love of god that is the key for the acts 29 to repeat today we have to understand that in life there is something called mission and there is something called purpose once this gets twisted everything begins to go wrong you all heard about mission statements how many of you know mission statements if you go to cmc if you go to vit if you go to any church or any um you take anybody who are who are in leadership positions or they are even making products to sell or whatever they'll have the mission statement and every employee including the owner have to submit or be very clear about what the mission statement is no company is bigger than their mission statement if the company forgets a mission statement that company is doomed to fail in the same way the church has to understand the mission statement for their life and the purpose for their life it's commonly uh, made as a mistake in the body of christ the mission statement of god and the purpose of each individual is just made as one whole thing and very confused that is where the first problem starts mission st- mission uh, according to the dictionary say it says an important assignment given to a person or group of people typically involving traveling abroad the purpose it says the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists now there are two things that are involved in our lives one is the mission with which we have to live and then how to fulfill that mission is when we find our calling for example there is a mission statement of god what is that mission statement ephesians 4 ephesians 4 13th verse until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the knowledge of the son of god that we at really mature manhood the completeness of personality which is nothing less than the standard height of christ own perfection the measure of the stature of the fullness of the christ and the completeness found in him you know the mission of heaven is this is the only mission of heaven concerning every soul that comes into the body of christ if this is not understood the church is a failure if this is not understood our christian life becomes very dull and very 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 surface based 
and it doesn't have that energy and power to move imagine suddenly for example cmc i mean suddenly the mission statement is taken out and the and the director says okay whatever you, whatever you feel good you can go ahead and do it you know what will happen to that hospital you know what will happen to that hospital everybody will fix their own rates and one side everybody will be starting starting to give free treatment and suddenly everybody will start to work only 10 days a week, 10 days a month you know because of that mission that is there an organization functions correctly until we all understand globally not only aft based globally when you see any believer from any church or any village of any city of any country if you don't understand the mission of heaven in that soul in in our soul we lose the purpose what is the mission again and we until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the son of god i'm re- i'm reading amplified bible that we might arrive at really mature manhood the complete of persona completeness of personality which is nothing less than the standard height of christ's own perfection the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ and the completeness found in him in order to fulfill this mission god set up an office beautifully he sets up an office no the terms that we read here are very business oriented god is not about to create some religious centers some emotional people who will just cry in worship who will just who will just fall down and then go smile and be very charming god is not all about that he sets up an office go to verse 11 4 and 11 his gifts were varied he himself appointed and gave men to us some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and some teachers mission got ready the office gets set up what is their uh, what is the work of the office verse 12 their work was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body equipping building up these are all these are all not, cannot be understood in an emotional way if if we ever get very emotional about god and christianity this doesn't work god has a mission in mind and he set up an office and he set up the office differently in different mold and then he told them this is the work that you have to do you have to build up the stature and the measure of my son in everybody how many of you are getting it this is the mission of heaven anybody any of us in not aligned with this mission they are not getting anywhere that is why acts stopped with 28 i'm not saying it is not happening today Ma- the staggering uh, the the statistics really staggered me 12 people 12 disciples one gone 11 and then one more was added 12 they 12 just 12 people they were able to shake the whole nation of israel upside down people feared them the 12 and their families and all the uh, people who heard the message of christ they all gathered 120 finally that is all and look at the amount of impact it has come to velor because that impact of 120 has reached velor how many of us today in the body of christ let's take the same number at least 12 crores the whole world i don't know i don't know the statistics where is the numbers how can how can 12 crores of christians cannot impact and move on this acts of the apostles into the present age it's going to happen there's enough grace of god 
Hallelujah. 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 There is an awakening that's happening in every nation. You know the problem in this connection of office setup and their work and their job is the only job. Whatever they do, whatever this office does has to be to build up the image of Christ in a person. That's all they should do. If that is done perfectly with single mindedness, with single heart, everything begins to work correctly. Now this office began to malfunction. All the five offices began to separate. They began to separate their ministries and they began to separate their talents for God and they began to separate and separate and separate. All the five began to have their own mission. Hope you're getting me. All the five began to have their own mission. Prophets never go along with teachers. The teachers never like the prophets. The prophets, just to get commercial, began, they have to build up. Whatever prophecy or they are prophesying, it is for building up the image of Christ. Whatever teaching is given, the teaching has to build up the image of Christ. Whatever evangelism is done, evangelism is done to build up the image of Christ. Whatever pastoring is done, pastoring has to be done in the image of Christ, to build up the image of Christ in every soul. The inventory of the pastor or the minister or any office is has the image of Christ being formed in the souls that are coming to us. Is the, are they equipped enough to face and bring down the same power that was poured out through the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost? Is that happening? That's the only thing all these five officers should be discussing today. Somewhere there's an alignment changed. Pastors never go along together. That itself shows an alignment has changed. Pastors uh, can, uh, fighting about you chose, yeah, I, I only brought this sheep to my fold, you stole my sheep. This sheep was mine, how dare you take it? They are not able to get along together. When you see pastors, I mean, my, my heart just breaks. I am friend of so many pastors because I am not running a church, I think I have a blessing. So many pastors are friends with me because they come to, 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 to uh, uh, learn about worship music. They come to learn about uh, how to play instruments, to teach their worship team, how to conduct uh, and bring out songs for the congregation. So a lot of pastors come, a lot of worship leaders come, a lot of people come. And you know what? I purposely bring two or three pastors together and I watch them. And I watch them. It breaks my heart. They are not able to go along. You know why? Mission is lost. They live on a purpose. You know mission and the purpose? Purpose is, mission is, this is the only mission. Purpose is, I, bec I, re I realize my calling. This is the purpose of each one of us. You can be a doctor, engineer, nurse, or whatever. A housewife, a homemaker. You can be any technician, an IT guy, whatever. That's your calling on this earth. But your mission is not to make money and be a good Christian. There it's, everything stops. The moment a person brings up the purpose and his mission together and confuses the whole agenda of heaven, then we have good Christians. We don't have victorious Christians. We want powerful Christians, power-packed Christians. We, the, the body of Christ, here it says, building up Christ's body. You know, the discussion that pastors and all these officers have about building up Christ's body. How many people come to your church? Oh, thousand. Very good. How many years have you been doing ministry? Ten years. Wow, amazing. You heard about that pastor? In one year, he got two thousand. I don't know, man, what he's doing special. You know, building a body of Christ is not numbers. It's forming the image of our Lord in every soul. The image is the key. Heaven beckons when, every, when any of the offices talks about building up Christ's image. And every leader, every pastor, every evangelist should get satisfied about doing this mission. And that ministry will flourish like anything. That ministry will flourish like anything. If and uh, today, 
you know the 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 holy spirit uh, amazingly gracefully mercifully slowly moving out of these offices slowly moving out of these offices have you ever seen the movement in us called the ramp anybody watch the ramp nobody you don't see god tv it's an amazing youth movement it just happens for one seven days they pick up a ma- some month and gather everybody from every church and every nation they all come at least 5000 to 10000 in attendance you know how that started 9th to 12th going school students gathered up 5:30 every morning and prayed for one hour one whole year and this revival started lot of movements are starting because god said i will bring my praises from the child god is not waiting and waiting he wants to get this mission fulfilled he's not going to wait for somebody that he appointed and waited and saul didn't suit david already had a calling but saul saul also had a calling but saul had to be replaced i'm not sure i i don't i don't accept that theology saying you're going to be replaced i'm saying but you can be bypassed the work has to be done are you there the work has to be done so god mercifully he's not hating all these offices he's still functioning the churches are still functioning the prophetic ministry is still functioning everybody is functioning but only thing if the mission is forgotten and it is functioning as an organization then the impact from heaven is becoming less and less and less and less i'm sure you're all witnessing that in the present christian world if you if you're one like me very tired very tired about church spirituality very tired this is the message that has been placed on my heart from the year 98 why 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 and finally i think i'm not able to get the full impact of this whole thing but i'm able to get some of it i'm not saying god is angry with you god is angry with the churches i'm not saying that god is still pouring out more grace more grace and more mercy all his mission is my son's image should be formed in every soul can i get an amen now when the believers come actually the problem started both ways it, from not only from the office the problem started from the saints also you know the saints when they come to a church or go to a prophet they went with some some agenda in their mind they kept feeding these offices give our need we have this need don't talk about big uh, god's thing and all this history and all this future and heaven now do something about it so the ministry began to get diluted slowly got diluted and became need based became very need based the mission is stored slowly and slowly and slowly still it's on the picture the name of christ is lifted in the name of jesus prayers are made everything is done but slowly the believer also offered himself to this problem i am one of it i started like that we all start very powerfully and slowly things the pressure of so many things the pressure of future the pressure of the family the pressure of um, settling things in the in the in the correct durations studies this that everything started to dilute the mission of heaven it started correctly all of us started started really so fast and but slowly 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 things begin to come things began to come and the only thing they talk or when 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 believers see each other is what are you doing i'll pray about it that's all what are you doing oh you're studying engineering okay do well it's very competitive world very difficult to get jobs do well do well you're studying 12th oh my god you are on the brink of life or death 
if we finish this side that's all over so all this what happens is devil uses this and happily puts a cloud over that mission of god and and slowly the churches the pastors the evangelists everybody began to cater to the need or the purpose of a person when was the last time you saw a pastor i am not accusing anybody i am i am the first one to blame i didn't do it god has been dealing with me so don't don't think i'm here to accuse anybody did any pastor ask you what's your growth in christ man how many years you've been in the lord what's happening in your life are you are you seeing any kind of signs and wonders in your life is there a breakthrough is your friends recognizing there's something different in you is there is is anybody asking like that if if you have those kind of leaders god bless them god bless them amazing amazing bring everything into the light of christ and the mission will succeed hallelujah hallelujah so what's my mission and purpose on this earth at this present time my mission should change ephesians 4:13 should be my mission personally in my life the priority i know you all buy these verses and hang on the wall i why don't you get ephesians 4:13 and put it right in your mirror first thing you see is image the measure the stature of the fullness of christ should be formed that's the priority and that is why i'm alive today and that is why i use my profession right now i know whatever profession you are have this mission over your head submit to that god's mission about your life and then use your purpose whatever wherever your calling is and form this and form this and keep forming it every time examine yourself because paul says examine yourself what to examine whenever whenever uh, preacher says examine yourself oh lord i've done this i've done that this is the examination going on i'm not so good i've not prayed for so many days lord sorry 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 i will never do that again i will go to church regularly that is examination going on examine that life you know what when you were born you were not converted to a christian person you are a living organism hallelujah you became a living organism that organism is growing every day that is what heaven's mission is that image should be completely formed that image should be completely formed in you this is the mission of heaven so whenever we think about my purpose what's god's will for my life we separate earth and heaven this is earth i have to do something god has a calling in my life i have to complete it and after dying because i am a believer there is christ is resurrected i'm going to heaven so they separate heaven and earth and start to live on the basis of an attitude concerning heaven and earth that is i feel that is where the whole confusion the twist has come you know what the bible never separates a believer's position heavenward or earthward it never separates bible is not for it maybe we are all thinking about it in, in a certain way maybe we are all taught like that or we are molded like that i don't know what is the problem but bible doesn't support it when jesus offered us began to teach about prayer this simple prayer he he taught if you don't understand this principle the whole idea of praying goes wrong the whole idea of god goes wrong the whole idea of who you are goes wrong matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 it's a famous verse you can keep keep looking at me i'll just read it your kingdom come 
your will be de- be done on earth as it is done on earth as it is in heaven it's done on earth as it is in heaven heaven never separates a life on earth is separate a life in heaven is separate heaven never did that jesus tried to teach that in the first place he first made that very clear when you pray first worship the father in heaven don't look around and uh, worship all these things that you see don't be addicted to all these things that you see you just look to heaven jesus is not talking about how to live in heaven this is prayer is not being taught when you come to my father this is how you have to pray did jesus teach that when you come to heaven remember you should pray like this father hallowed be your name your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven no it has to be done on earth and how is the model do it on earth which is already the design is very clear the design concerning our life is very 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 clear in heaven if a christian a saint a believer understands that his prayer life is very different is very different same thing concerning prayer if you read philippians 4:19 and that's also a very famous verse i'm just giving you some very 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 known verses where the truth is really forgotten philippians 4:19 my god shall supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in christ if you need 100 rupees the supply comes from the glory do you understand that you understand that I don't know how much of financial problem you had this verse saved me from huge financial crisis not only financial crisis from huge uh, sorrowful griefful christianity the glory is ready it is in christ jesus a person has to understand how to open it the more striving a person does in this world he is not going to open the gates of heaven the gates of heaven waits for the key to come and open it and the flood gates pour out and the flood gates pour out the person who separates oh life on earth is like this when i go to heaven everything is going to be all right there are no tears in heaven there is there are no sickness in heaven that's all true but the real truth is heaven comes down we going to heaven is already destined hallelujah we going to heaven is already if you are in the blood of jesus if you are trying to live under the power of the spirit if you are submitting constantly to the word of god you are, if you are, if you are called the righteous one of god if god declared you righteous you are going to go to heaven that is not a problem at all heaven coming down is the issue today heaven coming down is the issue today the story is told of a boy who wanted a cycle he wanted a cycle so he goes to his mom and asks uh, mama i want a cycle and his mommy said uh, go pray so this boy doesn't know how to pray so he clicks on the television and he sees a message and that pastor prays and teaches and all that so he goes to his prayer room and prays like how we saw it in the tv the what eternal god merciful god all things belong to you nothing is impossible with you the what the creator the what eternal and unchanging the what loving provide me this cycle and he sleeps and next morning he wakes up goes outside the house and sees there's no cycle so he gets really frustrated he comes back to the television he opens a channel he goes to a different channel now there's a young fiery preacher preaching on faith and prayer and all that so he watches all that now he goes to his prayer room i claim this cycle in jesus name you said ask whatever you shall receive and i ask in jesus name I want this cycle tomorrow morning outside my house black and silver. And he sleeps next morning he goes outside 
there's no cycle he's he got really angry at god so he goes to his room he looks at the statue of mary sitting there he just takes that statue puts inside his shirt and goes to his prayer room he looks up and says jesus if you want to see your mother again i want this prayer shows who we are and the clarity we have about heaven and earth the clarity i i sometimes humorously wonder efficient says we are seated at the right hand of god just humorously okay don't take it very seriously jesus wants to take a break he's always sitting at the right hand we are next to him he says you sit here i'm just going out for a rest coffee or tea you take care you people will all, all be praying you are this is the intercession seat so you have to receive all the prayer and uh, you have to answer it and jesus is gone and you are receiving the prayer sometimes if you are very emotional christian you will go down and die on the cross again some prayers are made as if jesus has never come and died on the cross the 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 christians are not having so much of clarity about what happens from heaven what has happened according to heaven what is my life on earth where is all this ending what is the whole picture nobody fails to, everybody is failing to understand that so when you when you look at your life and decide on your purpose and your mission you must understand there is no difference between life in heaven and life on earth that has to go together never separate it we are talking about aligning our lives in the assignment and the mission of god so that the same power and the same ministry that was done during the early years of the apostles will happen again will it happen again amen and of course i quoted that ephesians 2 the 2 5 and 6 and 7 if you read we are alive here and as well as in heaven we are seated together with christ in the heavenlies i mean it is it is real man it is real we have to we have to get into these shoes and start living our life will be totally different we are we are alive right now next to christ in the heavenlies and as well as functioning on earth don't separate let's not separate our mission and our purpose things will start to flow we should not walk around as people who have no source our source is big our source is god we are seated there how much of source are we using let's let's begin to get into these verses and allow the holy spirit to work in us and get the alignment right this alignment is the key for a very very energetic and explosive christianity this alignment is the key now there are phases in all our life time is running out i'll just quickly close there is there are phases in a life of a believer and in those phases all the problems started actually there a believer getting saved and becoming a saint and what he was before that and what all happened during salvation and if you keep rolling back like that there are so many things that uh, that we'll have to untie i'm just given one more week to to preach so i'll continue this uh, this this teaching into the next week but in the finishing i just want to say this that when paul understood paul you know about paul you know the the revelation that paul got and who was paul before he became paul was totally opposite to who we are he was against christ he was against church he was against anything that concerns a movement or the name of jesus christ anything he was so angry that saul when he was touched by the love you know what that first question he asked it's not taught in churches or the or the people who are getting saved we we'll have we we'll have to we have to start teaching this 
what do you want me to do lord that question is not asked you get saved be a good christian read the bible come to church pray that's it you know what we are being purchased there is a price on our head and that price if it's not paid devil is the owner of that soul i mean that life is going to go to hell when jesus came and died that price was paid and he purchased you since we don't understand that who purchased us what purchase mean who's the master now we just treat jesus as a passport office giving an visa to heaven lord i am a sinner i know you died for me i know you shed your blood for me i just accept you as lord and savior we don't we just say that very quickly you know what lord means you i accept you as lord means all the slaves will understand that once you are saying somebody is lord you are a slave to that person whom you say lord paul understood that in the very first instant now i'm sold out what do you want me to do what's your assignment i am just submitting to that that paul why did he become such a powerful apostle you know what not because of his intelligence you know what when you read read his epistles all his citizenship all his intellectualism all his learning he says it's all rubbish you know the alignment that he made philippians 3 and verse 10 this is the alignment paul made my mission is this my purpose is this and it matched the mission and purpose of heaven philippians 3:10 for my determined purpose is that i may know him that i may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly and that i may in that some same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection and that i may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed everybody say transformed to his death continually transformed what's the mission of heaven image be formed in a soul what's paul's mission i may be transformed into this image when this matches nothing can stop that soul from influencing the world you know what they do hand twisting prayers and all 21 days fasting and this i'm not ridiculing fasting i i want to fast i tried i try i was able to go for 3 days and i don't feel guilty about it and uh, i i really appreciate somebody going for 21 days a guy tried more than jesus for 41 days and he died i mean i'm not ridiculing fasting what i'm saying is if you are twisting the hand of god for bringing down revival lord you know only thing that attracts revival if you have an attitude the mission of heaven your mission revival breaks any other mission heaven doesn't support whoever is in the sound of this voice listening online may i tell you don't break your head over your christian life don't break your head over how to get the city saved how to get this country saved persecution is coming how am i going to survive align your mission with the heaven's mission revival breaks out revival breaks out you might say i know jesus do you want to know jesus as a savior and keep it as a passport in your wardrobe and when i die i have the visa you want to treat jesus like that christian life is going to be very boring very tiring very very tiring no use it's it have it has no usefulness for us it has no usefulness for those who are around us and in the church there's no use at all 
you know many people got passport and they forgot when it got expired also we 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 hope some day we will use it and or some people get passport when they want to go suddenly an offer comes they get a passport now christ cannot be used like that trouble comes people are in the church can i get this can i get that it's too much and when everything is settled they forget i think we should stop asking each other some of the common questions or when we talk about somebody we we have this uh, i have this knowledge are you saved yes wow praise god it stops it doesn't stop there it's just a starting i think we should we should we should form our questions differently form our agendas differently find out form a fellowship and don't discuss about some issues in this if christ image is formed every issue is settled if a person understands the mission of heaven you know what you want to really attract god 100% you get into the mission of god 100% you get into really get into the mission of god 100% i teach my son every day every day first things first don't do anything else it's jesus it's god's word it's prayer first first the i i i i i advise him daily and i and i tell to myself the moment i don't have the eagerness to pray or the word becomes dull and boring you know what that shows i can live my life i don't need god you know when i need god after death i don't want to go to hell you know why i need god i have some issues of bondage and sin i need uh, i i am wherever i i feel i am not able to control myself wherever i feel weak i need god 100% we are purchased he is the lord let our mission be very clear let our mission be very clear let our purposes align let our all our purposes align with the mission statement of heaven until we all attain this faith into the full stature and the measure of Jesus Christ you can preach this message on and on and on and on and on for years and years and years because Christ cannot be exhausted Christ cannot be exhausted what i knew about him when i got saved for 5 years 5 years later i knew little more now so much more as as we grow and grow or grow in the lord it just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing this image forming in our life is the mission of heaven when the mission of heaven and the mission of our life becomes the same and we begin to use our calling and purpose into forming this image everywhere we go this is the only agenda that should be constantly bothering us constantly bothering us we'll we'll feel outdated i'm sure we'll feel outdated i feel uh, so many i see so many college students here nobody told me this you you they 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 will they will make you feel you are just an ancient man from some uh, planet or some don't worry god is your image and that is the that is the reason he came down and he's died for you and he wants you to form that image don't worry about peer pressure don't worry about anything this is the mission of heaven make that your mission now i wonder why bible always says remember the lord in the days of your youth you know what when you grow old it it doesn't get in it doesn't get in youth no he is always in the receiving mold receiving very 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 okay okay we'll apply it we'll do it now we'll do it but the old people know but practically brother how do we take it uh, you can we can talk about it but youth doesn't do that you know okay brother hallelujah we'll do it make this your mission as you are entering into a career or whatever you are entering you might even become a full time minister and forget that that mission of heaven that i've seen that in churches they, there is no mission of heaven in in many many churches we are glad we are here today very uh, the the ministry is striving to build up people to 
to bring people into the knowledge of god's word there's nothing else that can that can run a life when I mean, people are just very clear and ministries are many many ministries are working towards this but you can become anybody you want whether it's ministry or business or whatever don't change the mission of your life don't change the mission of your life make this your mission and watch what heaven does in your life watch what heaven does in your college watch what heaven does in your family heaven will not be silent when a person brings god's heart god's mission his heart like paul i want to know him you know this is the secret of the power behind the acts of the apostles christ christ whatever what how much beating they get wherever they put they were singing you know what that image cannot be erased it is eternal it's from glory to glory it cannot go out so don't buckle up don't feel uh, don't feel it's it's boring or it's not it's not applicable no whoever comes into an alignment into an agreement with this mission will never fail in their life amen amen let's all stand up pray and close this